Hello to everyone. Uh, thank, thank you for joining us today. My name is Maria Elena Durazo and I'm California State Senate uh, representing Central and, and East Los Angeles. Um, and today is that we're, we're talking about our Senate Bill 951 on the anniversary of California's original paid family leave law being signed. And uh, we led the nation 20 years ago. We were so proud of what we were doing. But today, our, our, our program compares poorly to other states. A minimum age, wage worker in California currently receives less income from our paid family leave than in almost any other state's program. For families barely scraping by, working extra jobs, extra hours, cutting costs at every opportunity, there's just no way to absorb 40% pay cut when a baby is born or illness strikes. And as prices go up on groceries or housing, uh, the chances are pretty slim that a low wage worker uh, can access the paid family leaves, even though they contribute in every single paycheck. So workers earning $20,000 or under $20,000 a year make up 37% of those who pay into the fund, but only 14% of the paid family leave uh, claims. And what's even worse is the California's low benefit rate um, more uh, unfairly harms Latina mothers. Um, California cannot be a model for the rest of the country if our most cherished programs are leaving working class women behind. For that reason, we introduced SB 951 and it would provide lower paid workers earning roughly $57,000 a year or less 90% wage replacement compared to the current 60 and it could even fall down to 55% of their wages. So. The governor has a decision to make within the next seven days. Uh, he can let California fall for even further behind the rest of the nation or do the right thing. Sign SB 951. Make sure that all Californians that contribute are able to benefit from the paid family leave. So with that, uh, I want to move on to our next speaker, uh, Jerry Sandoval. Uh, uh, Jerry is going to share a story of his own personal experience and representing the organization Parent Voices. Thank you, Jerry. Hi, yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jerry Sandoval Neri. I live in San Diego. I'm a proud member of Parent Voices and California Working Family Coalition. When my daughter was born, I was excited to take paid family leave uh, to spend time with her. The best part about being there for her was uh, to protect her and to welcoming her uh, to this world. Uh, I was kind of a, an overprotective dad, and uh, I would always get up in the middle of the night to check up on her and to make sure that she was breathing. Um, you know, I had two awesome weeks with her, but when I got my first paycheck from the EDD, I realized I couldn't afford to stay on paid family leave uh, and pay my bills at the same time. I realized I had no choice but to return back to work. Uh, and making the choice to go back to work uh, was heartbreaking. It made me feel like I was picking work over my family, which I didn't want to do. Uh, I didn't go back to work, uh, well, uh, but I did go back to work because either, either we work at, uh, or we didn't eat at home. So uh, I had to, to make that tough decision. And then when I, when I went back to work, I worked two jobs. Uh, I was sleeping six hours a, a night. I was excited to go home after work and tell my kids, or well, my kid that I love her, and still uh, help out around the house. Um, you know, family to me is very important. And I want to be able to support my family and I want the best for my child. Uh, if paid leave had 90% wage replacement when my daughter was born, uh, I wouldn't have had to sacrifice that time with her. And as a member of the community of California, I asked to please, uh, Governor Newsom, please sign SB 951. Um, I don't want uh, other parents to go through the same situation that I went through. And I'm not only speaking for myself today, but I'm speaking for a lot of people in the community. Um, hola, mi nombre es Jerry Sandoval y uh, soy miembro de Parent Voices y de California Working Family Coalition. Um, cuando mi hija nació, apliqué para el Paid Family Leave, eh, en el cual yo podía obtener seis semanas pagadas como nuevo padre de familia. Desafortunadamente, tuve que regresar a trabajar de inmediato porque cuando recibí el primer cheque de EDD, me di cuenta que solo me estaban pagando 60% de mi sueldo. 
uh, uh, ya con el 100% de mi sueldo eh, estaba batallando para pagar mis biles y poder mantenerme, así es con el 60% no iba a ajustar. Uh, regresé a trabajar con el corazón roto porque sentía que estaba uh, poniendo mi trabajo primero después de mi familia, pero si no trabajaba no podíamos comer. Uh, como miembro del estado de California, le pido al gobernador Newsom que por favor firme eh, SB 951. Hablo no nomás por mí, sino por muchos de la comunidad. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Thank you, Jerry. Um, and I, I, uh, I just want to make a few other remarks in Spanish. Um, gracias por acompañarnos el día de hoy. Uh, en el aniversario de la ley original de permiso familiar pagado. Aunque hace 20 años éramos líderes en la nación, hoy uh, California se compara pobremente con los programas de otros estados. Uh, las familias que apenas sobreviven con dos o tres trabajos, trabajando horas extras, uh, no hay forma de absorber un recorte salarial del 40% cuando nace un bebé o caen enfermos. Hoy los trabajadores que ganan menos de 20 mil dólares por año son los que uh, 37% contribuyen al fondo, pero solo el 14% um, uh, reciben, um, uh, uh, hacen la solicitud. Pero no se debe a que las familias de bajos ingresos eh, eh, uh, estén pasando menos crisis. Al contrario, simplemente se ven obligados a seguir trabajando. Uh, y esto afecta peor a las madres latinas, porque casi tres de cada cinco viven debajo de la línea federal de pobreza. Esta propuesta de ley SB 951 proporcionaría a los trabajadores que ganan 57 mil dólares o menos un reemplazo salarial del 90%. No tendrían que perder 40% de su salario. Uh, ahora vamos a seguir adelante. Now we move on to our next speaker, Tia Orr. She is the executive director of SEIU. Uh, she represents 700,000 frontline workers in California. And uh, we appreciate all of what you've done. Uh, Tia, go ahead. Thank you, Senator DeRazzo, and thank you so much for your leadership. And um, just for the last speaker, Jerry Sandoval, you are the reason why we're here and, and continue the fight. Um, I think most of you know that California Paid Family Program was once a progressive beacon for the nation. Um, 20 years ago, working people fought for this law, along with Sheila Kuehl and so many community leaders. We stood up for the principles that no worker, no worker should be forced to choose between caring for their families or going hungry. Today, as we celebrate California values behind the nation's first family, family leave law, we're asking, pleading with Governor Newsom to stand with SEIU members and hardworking people like Mr. Sandoval around the state to fix it. We need Governor Newsom's signature on SB 951 this week to make paid family leave work for lower wage workers and people of color. We need to finally make this program accessible to brown and black workers across the state of California. With the governor's signature, California can again lead the nation on this critical issue for women and for equity. Right now, to be honest, folks, there's just no way for workers who are barely scraping by in low-wage jobs to get by on 60% of their usual wages. We know landlords don't just accept 60% of our rent, and a mom can't take home a full bag of groceries for 60 cents on the dollar. Hundreds of fast food workers over the most recent years and months came to the Capitol last month specifically to fight for a voice in a terribly dangerous industry. I heard from these workers day after day after long hours in these jobs, working over hot grills and fryers on the front line serving customers. They can't hope to access the benefits they need when they get sick or need to care for a baby. Megan, for example, says, you're a new mother and working in fast food. You work right up until the day you have a baby and then head back to work as early as four weeks after you give birth. You have no other choice, right? Four weeks to recover from giving birth and bond with your baby, um, or do you put money on the table to feed your family? I would argue that we're better than that in California and would push the governor to sign SB 951. We all know and hopefully can agree that bonding with the baby should not be a privilege enjoyed by only the most fortunate and caring for a sick or injured family member should not be a luxury for just the few. 
We need paid family leave that is accessible to all. We need to make sure that workers who've paid their whole lives into this program, into paid family leave, can actually afford to take the time off when they need it. SB 951 is absolutely a matter of equity. Our current law is an example of institutionalized racism, where brown and black people do most of the low wage work, but are locked out of the program that they actually pay for, effectively subsidizing paid leave of our higher paid earners in the state of California. A little more than a week ago, the governor signed an executive order to create an Office of Racial Equity in California. It's a breakthrough in state government, accountability for fairness and equity. Its job will be to identify and rectify egregious examples of racial equity in our state programs, such as our current paid family leave program. Good, good news on this is that we have an opportunity to do something right now. Within the week, the governor can sign SB 951 and create a more equitable paid family leave program for Mr. Sandoval and others. This could happen this week. And I hope the governor is hearing us today and we're here all call for justice and equity for workers in low wage jobs, especially for our black and brown brothers and sisters. Um, so I'll stop there, Senator. Again, thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Jerry Sandoval, for coming with us today. And hopefully, again, we can get the governor to sign this important measure. Thank you, Tia. Uh, and we want to uh, move on now to hear from Sonia Diaz. She is the founding director of the UCLA Latino Policy and Politics Institute that um, are an important resource for all of us who are policymakers. Uh, Sonia. Thank you so much, Senator DeRazzo. I think that this is just integral to ensure that we have not only a California lens on this, but inevitably a Latino lens. I'm pleased to be here. The passage of SB 951 would mean so much to families and their ability to care for loved ones. We heard that from Jerry and we are hearing it each and every day during this pandemic. But I wanna share that it would especially mean a lot for Latinas in this state. Latinas make up over 20% of our state's population. They represent a majority of our female workforce now and well into the future. Research shows that over the last few years of the COVID-19 pandemic, Latinas have been particularly hard hit from jobs to leaving college to health disparities and comorbidity. The institute that I lead, the UCLA Latino Policy and Politics Institute, found that last year, Latinas exited the workforce during the pandemic more than any other group. And this is due in large part to caregiving responsibilities. In fact, research from LPPI published just last month reiterated this finding. My colleagues found that Latinas spent quadruple, quadruple the time caring for their families and double the time maintaining their households compared to Latino men. Further, Latinas are more likely to work in low-wage jobs in industries like hospitality that took some of the hardest hits in the beginning of the pandemic and continue to this day. Now, research has found that for those Latinas that are self-employed, we're in a culture of innovation, a state of entrepreneurship. Latinas that are self-employed, half of them in California, lived in or supported lower income households. And they did this at more than 1.5 times the rate of white women. So Latinas are doing the same work, important work, essential work, innovative work, yet they're being left behind. If there was ever a time that Latinas need support, the time is now. And supporting Latinas goes beyond correcting these disparities. Supporting Latinas recognizes that this bill in particular leads California to a prosperous future for all. Over the next 30 years, Latinas in the state of California is expected to grow. And our role as Latinas, as Chicanas, as Latini, Latinx, is essential to the future of California, our economy, and our democracy. And so given this backdrop, this bill should be a priority for Governor Newsom to sign. Yet, in a state where the signing of this bill should be a no-brainer, we're still waiting. And we're waiting during a midterm election that's teaching us that political parties are continuing to take the policy needs and preferences of Latinos for granted. And Latinos need their leaders, their elected leaders to deliver on the common sense policies 
that will help them. I apologize. The mailman is here and my pit bull is. <laughs> um, let me let me close this up. It's clear that low income workers, the majority of whom are people of color, including Latinos, Asian Americans and blacks, women and immigrant workers would benefit greatly from being able to access paid family leave that will actually take care of them when they are a family member is sick or when a child arrives. SB 951, if signed into law, would do just that. And when we talk about equity, we need to talk about Latino inclusion, and this is policy inclusion. Four years ago, Governor Gavin Newsom made six months of paid family leave per child an early goal of his administration. His signature on this bill, like his signature on Medicare for All, is an important step towards realizing this commitment and ensuring that California's Latino families are no longer left behind. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sonia. Appreciate all of the uh, research and work that you do for our community. Next, we have Dr. Felicia Lester. Uh, she is an associate professor and medical director of gynecologic services at the University of California in San Francisco. Um, Dr. Lester. Thank you so much. And um, I'm proud to be a part of this panel. Um, you know, here in California, as in the world, reproductive freedom means the ability to choose whether or not to have a child and to know that that choice will not endanger your health or lead to economic devastation. And California has taken really important steps to enshrine the right to abortion in the state constitution, which I completely applaud. And we now have the opportunity in California to strengthen support for disability and paid family leave. And this is huge for new parents, new parents that I meet every day on labor and delivery and in the office. And <clears throat> paid family leave and state disability insurance programs really provide wage replacement, but only partially when they're disabled by their pregnancy or need to recover from childbirth. As you've already heard from other speakers, these programs leave many workers with no choice but to keep working against our medical advice because they provide most workers with only 60% of their regular income, which is simply not enough, especially for the lowest wage workers. Unfortunately, being pregnant in the United States is not as safe as it should be. In fact, we have the highest maternal mortality in the developed world, which is something that is a tragedy in and of itself. These risks are even more stark for black pregnant people who are about three to four times more likely to experience a pregnancy related death than their white co counterparts. And we know that financial insecurity can magnify maternal health risks. Even here in San Francisco, we have one in, one in four Latino moms and about one in five black moms report that they've experienced food insecurity during their pregnancy. And Latina and black moms are almost twice as likely twice and three times as likely as white moms to report being unable to afford postpartum care. We know through a large body of evidence indicates that paid leave can lead to improved maternal and infant health outcomes, including decreasing preterm birth, increasing the duration of breastfeeding, which is very important for both infant and long-term health for babies and moms, and decreasing infant mortality rates. Paid leave also decreases the likelihood that a pregnant person will have postpartum mood disorders, something that is serious and can lead for long to long-term disability. And for one in three birthing people who have C-sections or those who experience other complications during childbirth, extended leave is absolutely necessary to prevent long-term health conditions and injuries. Because of all of this, the American Academy of OBGYN recommends a minimum of six weeks of uh, paid family leave for all new parents. When parents can't afford to take leave from work, we have pregnant workers unable to follow their doctor's recommendations, which can have really devastating impacts for maternal and infant health. This is magnified for pregnant farm workers who may come in contact with pesticides that are associated with miscarriages or preterm birth, low birth weight birth defects, and adverse neurodevelopmental outcomes for their babies. California can't claim to be one of the nation's beacons of reproductive justice while forcing pregnant people and postpartum people into compromising their health or weighing the risk of economic well being. And other states have passed more, much more robust paid family leave and medical leave programs, including Oregon, Washington, and the District of Columbia. 
And these rates do make a difference. We recently learned from a report from low wage workers out of DC that these workers are able to take leave at rates comparable to higher wage workers once rate wage replacement was increased. And pregnant and new parents need more support, not less. They certainly need to know that they'll be paid when they cannot work because of their health or their need to bond with their new baby. Um, and they shouldn't be forced into making those decisions. Pregnant workers should not have to work till the day they give birth and new parents shouldn't have to go right back to work after having their baby. It really serves no one. We really need to catch up in California and pass SB 951 to ensure that all families can follow provider recommendations and take paid leave when necessary for their health and well being. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Lester. Uh, we're going to move on now to um, if there are any questions um, from our members of the media. So I will introduce Jenna. Uh, Jenna, if you'll uh, take over from here and, and handle any uh, questions that come in. Sounds good. Um, if any members of the media would like to answer or ask a question, you can either put it in the chat, the Q&A feature, and I'll read it out loud. Or if you want to raise your hand, I can unmute you. Um, we have one question in the chat so far or in the Q&A that we can start out with. Um, what can people do to help put pressure on Governor Newsom to sign this bill? Okay. Well, I would say, and I'll, I'll start, uh, um, is to join uh, the many, many uh, hundreds of organizations. Most recently, a uh, coalition letter with 400 organizations statewide signed a letter to Governor Newsom asking him to sign uh, SB 951. So I would ask you, because this is uh, this this has actually been a movement that has grown and grown and grown around this specific issue. So I would ask you, send a letter, call the governor's office, uh, join any one of those organizations to make your um, voice heard, uh, especially during this these last few days before the, the deadline. Anybody else want to jump in on that? Uh, oh, uh, I know, social media, you can tweet. Is there a way, Jenna, to share some of that with, with folks? Yeah, we can send out like some sample posts to everyone. Okay, okay. If there's anything that um, you can put out, that, that would be great right now. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you for that question. Uh, next, Jenna. Um. Is this the first attempt to get this legislation signed? Okay, who wants to jump in on that? I know we, um, I know there was an attempt last year, uh, last year, right? And it was uh, vetoed. Um, uh, there was an issue raised in that veto message about uh, how to pay for the uh, additional, the higher re wage replacement. Uh, we addressed that very specifically by lifting the cap on the um, uh, salary uh, and the percentage of the of the salary uh, at one hundred forty five thousand dollars. No one above that who earns above that has to continue to pay their percentage. Uh, the way that other workers do. So just that alone, lifting the cap, making all workers pay the same percentage of their salary, uh, uh, that alone would take care of the additional uh, cost associated with this. So there is no, there is no, nobody's going to suffer from this. People who haven't been paying above the $145,000 will then have to pay on that 145,000 above that $145,000 mark. Um, Catherine or anyone else want to jump in with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. So although there was a, a bill last year to increase wage replacement rates for paid family leave, um, it's very different from the one this year. As the Senator mentioned in that bill, there was no mechanism to address how the funds would be gathered to support the program. And in the governor's veto message, that's what he said is the reason for vetoing this bill. 
Uh, like the Senator mentioned, this bill is extremely different from that in that it is self-sustaining by getting rid of a loophole that protects the highest income workers from having to pay the same portion of their income as the lowest wage workers who are less likely to access the benefits in the first place. It um, provides the, the income that's necessary to, to pay for these benefits and completely addresses the, the concern that was raised last year. Thank you, Catherine. Anyone else want to remark on that? No? Okay. Um, Jenna? Um, could we go back to the question about putting pressure on the governor to sign this bill, but could you say it in Spanish? Sure. Um, uh, quiero pedirle a la comunidad que está interesada en apoyar esta propuesta de ley SB 951 que pueden llamar a la oficina del gobernador, pueden uh, uh, por la social media, pueden uh, también participar, uh, pueden uh, enviar un uh, email a la oficina del gobernador, uh, y también pueden estar a participar con varias organizaciones, más de 400 organizaciones uh, han firmado una carta al gobernador pidiéndole que firme esta ley. La, el teléfono de la oficina del gobernador es 916-445-2841. Gracias. Thank you. Um, if any any members of the media have questions, you can type them in the um, Q and A, or you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Um, it looks like Alberto Moreno has a question. I'll um, can you hear us, Alberto? Or can you can you speak? I guess. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is actually Claudia. Oh. I'm the reporter, but I was using uh, my colleague as well as uh, <laughs> account. Um, I'm Claudia from Estrella TV. Uh, see, I just wanted to ask if Sonia, Sonia could, could repeat the data that she had about uh, in Spanish about Latinas being the most impacted uh, because of their caretaker roles in, compared to Latino men and to white women. I don't know if Sonia can do that. That'll be great. Hi, Claudia. Thanks for that. I cannot, but I will send my comms and the research authors can do it in Spanish if you'd like uh, to do an interview with them. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for the question. Jenna, anybody else? Not at this moment, um, if any members of the media have questions. Okay. Oh, wait, we're sharing, a, okay, Sonia, Sonia's information. Um, is there anybody else that wants to make a final, um, final remarks or comments? You've all been working so hard. Uh, we've come to the, to the final days here. And so anybody out there, Everybody out there who's listening, who, who hears us, please, you know, communicate with the governor, tell him how important this is to you, that, you know, especially our lower paid workers should not be excluded for such an important program, uh, and they should not have to uh, uh, lose 40% of their salary uh, in order to be able to stay with their baby or a, a, a member of the family that's become ill. So, Thank you, everybody. You're great. We're going to get this done. And I'm sure that all of this, what you've done, is going to convince the governor that to do the right thing and sign SB 951.